So that was uh, disappointing to say the least. I mean, what was that, like a 39 minute highlight video of which only probably 20 of the 39 minutes were actual football. Um, you know, the two hand touch football, if you could call it that. I mean, it was definitely a little bit disappointing, man. I mean, first and foremost, uh, for those of you that follow me on Twitter and shameless plug, go follow me at the hub underscore YT. You would know that I already knew everything that basically happened um, during the scrimmage when I was watching it because Friday night when I actually thought it was going to be like a live stream of the scrimmage on Friday night turned out no it was going to be on Saturday and then I found out on Saturday at 6 o'clock which was the time the Giants said it would go live that it wasn't even a live stream it would just be a put together um, high live video and it was only available at 6 o'clock for people with NBC I was like ah now I gotta wait until 7 for them to upload it on giants.com and whatnot it would that was just a whole situation that already kind of turned me off a little bit from it and i was like that they kind of did a little bit of poor job of relaying that information to the people and whatnot um either way i already knew what was going to happen because friday night i was just retweeting basically every single big reporter's tweets about the scrimmage like as it was happening i was retweeting everything because i was like all right let me just keep it all on one page you know that being my twitter page so anybody who follows me they have all the stuff right there in one place and so like i already knew what was gonna happen i knew about the wayne goleman 44 yard touchdown about the fact that lorenzo carter basically got like four sacks in like four minutes or something crazy like that i know it was all within the first half but he had two or three of those like one right after the other it was absolutely crazy like i already knew all about that i was just like i can't wait to see it you know live in person in the flesh some actual football and whatnot and was I disappointed? Like, for those of you that tuned into the live stream last night, I was live streaming with OGR, kind of both a mix up of a QA and a live reaction slash commentary, if you could call it that, which we couldn't even execute properly, once again, just because the way it was put together. You could see the disappointment in our faces, man. Like, for, first things first, right? The camera work was terrible. And I said this during the live stream. I was like, I don't know what they're doing or who they hired to do this, but they need to fire them. Somebody did say that, yo, man, it's like that because you don't want to give away too much information to opposing teams. Um, and I both understand that. And at the same time, I have a rebuttal to which is the preseason. You still have regular camera work for football. And then there's also another rebuttal to that, which is, well, in the preseason, it's not like you're running the full scheme or anything. It's all very vanilla. I'm like, all right, I get you. So they could have just been vanilla and, you know, showed regular camera work. It's it's not that hard. Because once again, the preseason is exactly that. It's vanilla plays. It's not too thought out. You know, it's not too complex. Not nothing that you would actually run in the regular season. But you could still see what's going on on the field. Like, I was so annoyed, especially on the Wayne Gallman run, for example, that you couldn't even see the way the offensive line and defensive line were performing against each other. You, you just saw Gallman bust through a hole. You could barely tell it was Shane Lemieux that was the leader at that hole. I think Tyler Haycraft might have been somebody else that made a nice um, block there. Once again, you can't exactly tell. And then Gallman, the camera angle switches, and he's like halfway down the field already at the end zone. Um, another example of bad camera work. Every time DJ was sacked, all you saw was DJ. Next frame, he's already sacked. It's like, it's like what? And the pacing of it was trash, too. The pacing really threw me off because they just fired it one play right after the other, bro. It was too quick. One play finished, and then they went to another play. And it wasn't even sequential plays, by the way. It wasn't like, oh, they just got a first down. Now they're trying for the next first down. Or they just failed to get a first down, so they're trying for the second and ten or whatever. No, it would be like they get a first down, and then they show a play that takes place actually maybe like six plays later or something like that and they chopped it up so like fast and paced put it together in such a fast pace that it was really confusing to tell what was going on um they did show the defensive scoring thing at the beginning which was really smart by the way coming up with a scorecard for the defense um that was completely undermined in the fact that they never told us when the defense actually scored they just kept racking up the points and towards the end they pulled up the scoreboard it was like 20 to 22 in favor of the defense and I'm like, when did these points come together? I'm like, obviously the sacks obviously led to some points, but the commentators could have at least been like, all right, that's another two or three points for the defense or something. Like it was just very confusing in, in the way it was put together. And that's not on the coaches, that's not on the players, that's not on the staff, that's not on anything, but just whoever the Giants got in the video editing room and the packaging room, man, that was just trash. So that was one way it was disappointing. Another way it was disappointing was, um, well, to be honest, that's my main gripe because I couldn't tell anything that was happening on the field except for major plays like touchdowns, sacks, big passes, and whatnot. 
Um, but another thing that was disappointing um, was that it wasn't live tackling, which we knew from beforehand anyway. And um, I'm fine with that because I'm sure they're trying to avoid another Xavier McKinney or David Mayo type situation. So that's completely understandable. You don't want to get anybody injured just like in a regular preseason game, which helps out for guys that, you know, probably are at greater injury risk like Ryan Connolly, who actually played today. And for speaking of which, Blake Martinez uh, sat out this the starting linebacker for the Giants, who we just signed to a relatively, you know, hefty contract. He sat out on um, Coach Judge said it's nothing to worry about, but this was his second day sitting out something. So if you want to take away anything from that, you can. I've heard something saying that on um, based on the GPS tracking uh, data that he was just scheduled to have a um, basically a rest day because he's been practicing very hard. Uh, then again, he's been working with some trainers, and that's where it's from Coach Judge. So, I mean, if he's just sitting out and taking a rest, there's really no need for him to be working with the trainers. Um, so, hopefully, he's all good. But, yeah, guys like Ryan Conley did play. Devontae Downs, who's kind of a new name that's really stepping up, had a nice game as well. Um, uh, inside linebacker there. If um, David Mayo he is out for the, uh, for the entire of the season, and for some reason they don't start Ryan Conley in place of David Mayo, Devontae Downs may be that guy. You know, um, of course, Tay Crowder and whatnot played. On the offensive side, I really like what I saw to Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman looked like a wide receiver that could get the job done. He looked good enough to be a number four, maybe even a number three option. Uh, once again, though, you know, it's very vanilla. So how much can we really take away from this? Everything I'm saying basically take with a grain of salt. But Corey Coleman looked really good. In fact, he was the wide receiver I saw showcased more than any other in the um, the highlight package. So, I mean, you know, uh, Darius Slayton had a nice catch, so did CJ Board, but they actually didn't so show the CJ Board catch. The only reason I know about the CJ Board catch was because of the tweets on Friday. But Corey Coleman had a nice one as well. He had a couple nice passes. Uh, definitely looked really good. Hopefully he could stay healthy. I mean, without the preseason, that's just more reason for him to be able to actually stay healthy and whatnot. Of course, Lorenzo Carter being the GOAT that he is with four sacks in the first half that I already mentioned. This is what I'm wondering, right? I know two of the sacks, he was lined up one-on-one -on -one against a tight end. So any outside linebacker would, would experience in the NFL is probably going to win their matchup against a tight end. Uh, so that was definitely, I think, just bad planning on the offensive side. The other two sacks, however, were definitely him one-on-one -on -one with the offensive line, whether it was somebody like Andrew Thomas or somebody else. Once again, because of poor camera work, you couldn't really tell. But I'm not worried about the, you know, sacks that he got coming off of tight ends because that's expected. I am a little bit worried on the sacks coming off of the offensive line and the offensive playing. So now I'm wondering is, is Lorenzo Carr just at his height now? Which is what I've been saying for months. If he's going to break out, it's going to be this year. I always have that three-year theory about players. They are what they are in their third year in the league. Lorenzo Carr is probably finally coming to his, you know, zenith to where he should be. Or is it just a result of bad offensive planning, you know, by consistently having him in one-on-one -on -one situations and for half of those against a tight end, which is just bad planning? Or is it just bad offensive play by the players themselves like Andrew Thomas and whatnot? And remember, um, was it last week or two weeks ago when Lorenzo Carter absolutely bull rushed Andrew Thomas? That's right, a speed rusher bull rushed our huge um, offensive tackle. Granted, he is a rookie tackle that's going to take time to develop. And I really want to extend that to the, to the entire offensive line. These guys are going to struggle for basically the first six to eight weeks before they really start to gel and whatnot. Um, that's another thing I've been saying for weeks now, that we should really take it a little bit easy on them. Shouldn't really expect the Dallas Cowboys' greatest offensive line of all time, you know, play from them. They're going to struggle. But it makes you wonder. Was that a result of him being a great player or just a result of the offensive line being terrible against him? So there's that as well. Leonard Williams also had a sack. Um, Darnay Holmes had a nice game. A couple pass breakups. Not really an interception to speak of, I think. Um, not sure how Jabril Peppers performed. I didn't really see any tweets or any highlights about him. He did, however, Darnay Holmes, he did, however, leave the scrimmage at one point with a questionable lower body injury. Wasn't sure if he returned. Once again, anything I'm not sure of is just because of the way that the scrimmage was edited and put together. It was really hard to tell anything that was happening on the field. And the information about Darnay Holmes that I'm telling you right now, I got from the beat reporters on Friday night when they were tweeting out the fact that he left the, um, he left the scrimmage with a questionable, you know, lower body injury and, you know, he was questionable to return and whatnot. Um, Wayne Gallman had a second touchdown tonight, a passing one, and somebody that nobody's really talking about that had a good night was also Graham Gano, the new Giants kicker. It seems like we got our dude. Every single kick this guy made was straight down the middle. 
in terms of accuracy the man seemed like Justin Tucker out there obviously he had the like power as well I think there was one 47 yard field goal listen I'm very happy with Graham Gano and I'm very happy with what he could do for us and lastly I want to speak upon Daniel Jones who had a all right night you know there was definitely a couple people kind of ragging on him you know because he kind of did not move the offense at all. The only time, you know, when Daniel Jones was in, in there, the only offensive points they got was from a field goal. He kind of went, I think, like on his four drives, he just went like three and out all the time or something like that. Just not very impressive. Could not move the ball within the red zone. Now, here's the thing I have to say on that. Once again, that could be poor offensive planning like we saw with the offensive line. It could just be the fact that the vanilla scheme was too vanilla. You know, it wasn't something that he could work with and really produce anything out of. It could be the fact that the offense is just struggling overall because in terms of training camps and stuff like that, we, we have to remember even though we're only two weeks away from football, these guys are only two weeks in in terms of football training because of the COVID situation. And two weeks in in football training, the defense always is one step, one step ahead of the offense. They always pick up things quicker. It's just the way that football goes. And so that could be it as well. It could just be that, I don't know, Maybe dude didn't take it seriously. I'm not saying this is it. I'm just listing out possibilities. Maybe he didn't take it, you know, as a real game and he didn't put his all. There's various reasons, but I'm not too worried about it because even Judge, he um, went up to DJ on the sideline. He's like, he liked 99% of what he saw. The only 1% that he didn't like was the fumble, which by the way, if it wasn't for that voice clip, anybody watching wouldn't know that he actually fumbled. Um, via the tweets, we did knew he fumbled and in the scrimmage, it just seemed like they edited that out. I'm guessing they don't want anybody, any other team to see what it looks like when DJ fumbles to have film on him and whatnot. It's not like we have an entirety of his rookie season to <laughs> observe that off of. Like, I'm really, in case you couldn't tell, I'm really, really disappointed with the camera work, man. Just so much, so much was taken away because of the bad camera work and you can't even make proper conclusions about anything. But that's my overall thoughts on the, the scrimmage, you know. The guys that stood out were definitely uh, Corey Coleman, Darnay Holmes, Lorenzo Carter, Graham Gano. Um, you know, the linebacking core, they performed all right. You know what I'm saying? Devontae Downs definitely showed why he was making a name for himself in training camp. Um, that's really about it. I mean, I can't really say there were any bad performances because in terms of the offensive line struggle, I'm going to put that towards just poor offensive planning, you know, just poor just poor play calling, which is kind of surprising because I would not expect that from Jason Garrett. But hey, man, got to remember, it's vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. So who knows? Uh, put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you all think. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.